Over half the world's population lives in cities, and that number is rapidly increasing. Over the last 20 years, we've seen a huge surge in the number of vehicles on the road. We definitely need to think about how do we transport people in a sustainable way, because transportation is at the heart of our economy. It is the way that we are able to do any kind of business. To find viable solutions is paramount. People are surprised that on-road transportation accounts for about 25% of global GHG emissions. About 40% of that is just from the passenger vehicle segment. But the only zero emission transport is walking or biking. And we know that's not realistic. If people want to continue to go from a small compact car to large SUVs and trucks, it's really important to think about different transportation fuels, but it's not the complete package. Any vehicle that we drive is not actually zero emission because there's still the embedded energy that goes into manufacturing that vehicle. It can't just be a one-for-one -one replacement from an internal combustion engine to an electric vehicle. We have to get people out of private passenger vehicles and into other sustainable modes of transportation. This is really difficult to tackle. We need to convince people that the alternative is as good, if not better. So it's really important for us to find as many alternatives as we can the best options are to marry renewable energy generation with the fuels that we're using for zero emission vehicles. So in the case of electric vehicles, that would be electricity generated by solar and wind. And in the case of hydrogen, that could be energy that is generated by renewables to produce green hydrogen. Hydrogen is a fantastic fuel it can be produced at any time from any energy source. It can be stored for long periods of time and then deployed when you need it to be available. The downsides for hydrogen is it's still fairly expensive to produce and it's not cost competitive with other fuel sources. So there's a lot of investment that needs to be made for it to be comparable. Solar energy is abundant, cheap, and easy to procure. Wind energy is one of the cheapest forms of renewable energy in the world today. It's also abundant in many parts of the world. The transportation system could largely benefit from the development of these sources of fuel that are becoming even cheaper than any fossil fuel comparative. We need the auto manufacturers, electric utilities, other private sectors to step in and take responsibility for some of this infrastructure deployment. We need to scale up manufacturing, increase the amount of battery manufacturing facilities, retrofitting and retooling existing auto manufacturing, training the Bosch workforce. Up, yeah. We need 300 million charging ports across the world in the next 20 years. That's a huge amount of investment. Billions, if not trillions of dollars and it cannot just be done with taxpayer funds. Renewable energy growth will only be limited by the value of the energy and making sure that it is a profitable endeavor for investors. But there's a lot of investment going on in different storage techniques, and that could really help to accelerate the pace and scale of renewable energy generation. We've seen lots of governments stepping in and providing funding and coordination with the auto manufacturers to make this happen. If the governments are saying we need to invest, that is a really, really critical signal. It's very difficult for a consumer to make a choice today to go all electric because it's just more expensive and there's fewer available options. So we can, as governments, and policymakers help encourage these alternative modes of transportation through policies and regulations. Research and development is really critical at this stage to help us scale manufacturing efficiently, reduce the price of the batteries themselves, and also find ways to reduce the number of resources that we need. We don't have 
an easy path forward. Never in the history of mankind have we tried to completely transform the fueling infrastructure for our transportation system. Great examples of communities that are encouraging other forms of transportation include countries in Latin America that have established bus rapid transit programs. It encourages people to get out of their cars and into a bus that will drop them off exactly where they need to be in a more efficient way. When many of us were quarantined, suddenly there were pictures of LA and Delhi with clear skies. That is largely because nobody was driving. Could we imagine a future where we can go for a run with no smog? We're accustomed to this pollution coming out of our tailpipes and we think that's okay, but we've never seen an alternative before. So when we think about the future with potentially more devastating weather events, we want to talk about how do we make sure our power stays on? How do we have access to clean water. We are decades behind where we should be in this transition to sustainable transportation. When it comes to private corporation decisions, I believe in change agents, individuals within the company that are encouraging their leadership to make a certain decision that benefits not just their company, but the planet. And I am starting to see these change makers arise, thinking more than just the bottom line, more than just the shareholder. They want to have a legacy. Sustainable transportation is one of those things that they can do. I am inspired by nature every day. And it is the thing that we should all contemplate when we're thinking about our individual decisions. Is it really important for you to buy an internal combustion engine car when you can get just the same benefit from an electric vehicle. The natural world is the only reason we're alive, and so nature is the most important thing for us to collectively protect.